Today on Out of Context, Romans 9.27, Paul says, Only a remnant shall be saved. We're going to take a look at that and more coming up. Let there be light. Let there be light. So today we're going to look at Romans 9.27, and this is about Paul using a text from the prophet Isaiah that says, Only a remnant shall be saved. But is that exactly what the text says? And we're going to examine exactly what the proper context of what Isaiah was quoting and see if it matches up with what Paul is trying to align with his doctrines of Christianity and his epistles. So take a look at Romans 9.27. Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. So what we have to understand is Paul is quoting from the prophet Isaiah by his own admission. Many times you're going to see throughout his own writings, you're going to see him saying, as it is written, or as the prophet so-and-so says. And what many Christians don't understand is that he's quoting from the previous prophets. And what we need to do with our own due diligence is check and see if the things that he's saying are so. Because many times, and most often times, what he will do is he will quote these things and change a couple words in the sentence from the original context that throws it all into a totally different context that he is providing in his doctrines. See, you have to understand that the prophets that were always writing before were always trying to warn Israel and let them know the peril that was coming if they didn't hearken unto God's laws and didn't listen to the prophets telling them to return back to God's laws because God promises the land of Israel only to the faithful who will actually keep his laws so that we bring glory to him. If we do not keep his laws, then we will be exiled. And this is the common theme that you're going to see throughout every single prophet in the Old Testament, or as I know it, the Hebrew Scriptures. So let's take a look at the original Scripture that Paul is quoting from Romans 9.27, saying that only a remnant shall be saved. Let's take a look. Isaiah 10, verse 20, And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel, and such as are escaped to the house of Jacob, shall no more again stay upon him that smote them, but shall stay upon Jehovah, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. The remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. For though the people of Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decreed shall overflow with righteousness. So what we can see here is if I'm going to post these side by side, what you're going to see is Paul changes the original text from a remnant shall return and changes it to a remnant shall be saved. And he does this because the original context being spoken of in the prophet Isaiah chapter 7 through 10 more specifically is about the issue of Israel, as mentioned before, that they had gone wayward, going away from God's laws. And what he says is that there will be hope. There will be a righteous remnant that will return one day back to the land of Israel. Because keep in mind, the whole focus is the piece of land and the people that were going to stay in it. We were promised the land if we obey and we were promised exile if we disobey. What we are promised, though, is that the curse will be reversed. If we obey once again, then we will return back to the land. And this is what our problem and solution is predicated upon, obedience to God's laws. What Paul is always referencing is disobedience to God's laws as a solution. This is contradictory to the whole point of the previous prophets, which were telling the people to return back to the laws. This is what you have to overcome. And he's very sly in his writings in that he changes these texts and to the unknown eye that doesn't know the previous uh, prophets and what they've written, it's easy to fall snare to these doctrines. So always keep in mind what the original intent and purpose of the prophets were is to get the people to come back. Now, Now that you can see this side by side, that he has changed the text to fit his doctrines, then we want to look further and see what the original context was in these chapters. Isaiah chapter 10 is speaking of the exile of Israel, who God would actually use the king of Assyria to exile the northern tribes. King Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, thought it was by his own power, by his own might, that he was exiling the northern tribes of Israel. Later, God would let him know, no, you are just simply the tool that I'm using to chasten my people Israel, and it is not by your own power. Take a look. Isaiah 10, verse 5, 
O Assyrian, the rod of mine anger and the staff in their hand is mine indignation. I will send him against an hypocritical nation, and against the people of my wrath will I give him a charge, to take the spoil and to take the prey, and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. For he hath said, Are not my princes altogether kings? Is not Cano as Carchemish? Is not Hamath as Arpad? Is not Samaria as Damascus? As my hand hath found the kingdoms of the idols, and whose graven image did excel them in Jerusalem and of Samaria, shall I not, as I have done unto Samaria and her idols, so do to Jerusalem and her idols? Wherefore it shall come to pass that when Jehovah hath performed his whole work upon Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Syria and the glory of his high looks. For he saith, By the strength of my hand I have done it, and by my wisdom, for I am prudent, and I have removed the bounds of the people, and have robbed their treasure and have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. So this story, you can actually see here that God is rebuking the king of Assyria. The king of Assyria thinks that it's by his own power and his own might. He thinks it's all him. And God's saying, no, what you don't understand is I'm just using you to punish the people of Israel. That's all I'm doing. He's calling Israel a hypocritical nation. And why is he calling them a hypocritical nation? Because they say, but they don't do. This was the whole problem of the people back in those days is that they would hear, but they wouldn't do it. He kept telling Isaiah to go tell the people, listen, but you're not gonna understand. Why? Because they're a rebellious nation. This was the whole theme. But in the end, Isaiah always ended with the fact that there's gonna come a day that you will return, everything's gonna be okay, you're gonna make it. It's important to understand that the Torah says in Deuteronomy chapter 29 that if you turn away from my laws, I will exile you to other nations. This was the promise. This is what you'll see in Daniel's prayer in chapter 9. This is what you'll see in Nehemiah's prayer in Nehemiah chapter 9, that we were rebellious. We didn't listen to your laws. Therefore, we were exiled and that we await the time when we can go back to the land due to our obedience and repentance back to God's laws. So now for Paul to even suggest that any salvation of Israel's is by disobedience to God's very laws is blasphemous. Our obedience to God's laws is what will bring us back to the land. It has nothing to do with another man dying for us or believing on another God. Matter of fact, Isaiah chapter 27 verse 9 says that the fruit of Israel's sin will be redeemed, our sin will be removed when we get rid of all idolatry and that we return back to God's laws. What Paul is presenting is an idol to worship another God, someone that we are supposed to look to other than Jehovah and another Lord other than the Lord that we know and look upon him and then disobey all the laws. This was the very problem we had in the beginning. This is why I always mention on these videos. It's a matter of problem and solution. If you think that the same problem on one side that we have is disobedience and the solution to that problem is disobedience again, you're very mistaken. But what he is presenting is a totally different doctrine, a doctrine that is not predicated on the laws of God and obedience to them. It is a doctrine very contrary to that, as many well know, that Paul suggests that the law is done away with and there's no need for obedience anymore, and this is what we have to overcome. No less than two chapters ago in Isaiah chapter 8, this is what the prophet Isaiah said about those that speak about the law in a negative light. Take a look. Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples, and I will wait upon Jehovah that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom Jehovah hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from Jehovah of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. And when thou shalt say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it's because they have no light in them. So again, you can see here that Paul's doctrines are directly in contrast and in contradiction to what God says and what the prior prophets were actually saying. You have to be very careful when you read the excerpts by Paul because especially in the book of Romans itself, he takes multiple passages from Isaiah, from Hosea, you can see, and we're going to look at these as time continues, and he changes the texts to try to meet his doctrine that the law is no more and that you need to look upon another person for some type of salvation that has to do with an after death. So I'm going to show these texts side by side once again, and you can see where Paul says that a remnant shall be saved, and saved from what Paul was talking about the doctrine of salvation, meaning something other than the salvation we're waiting for, and that is a redemption to go back to the land of Israel due to obedience to God's laws. 
And what Paul is presenting is salvation of someone's soul, which God never even speaks about. But what God always does speak about is that righteousness comes by obedience to God's laws. That's why he gave it to us so that we would be a beacon of truth and we would be someone to represent him on earth, to let all the world know that he is God. There's none else beside him and that we need to obey those laws to show the world righteousness. And you can see here that what the true intent of Isaiah the prophet was, was that he is saying that, look, though the remnant of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall, what, return. And return to what? Return to the land. It does not say anything about be saved and not being saved from something about hellfire, anything of that nature. Our problem, once again, is we were exiled from the land for disobedience to God's laws, and that solution, as shown in Deuteronomy chapter 30, is obedience to those very laws, and he will gather us from one end of heaven to the other and bring us back to the land. So, in conclusion, sorry Paul, that is not what the text says, and you have taken it out of context. And no matter how much Paul suggests disobedience, the true family of Israel, the true nation of Israel, a people that are awaiting redemption and salvation by Yehovah our God, are waiting for that in patient obedience to God's laws. So I hope that you can see these things now. I'm trying to help open those eyes so that you can see the things that have been taking place in the New Testament scriptures and in the epistles by Paul so that you can awaken as the time comes near. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again on another video. Let there be